Welcome to the one-in-one how-to series, Cloud Server Management. We'll cover the tools included with the one-in-one -one cloud servers that make management easier. These tools will be located in the one-in-one -one servers section of the one-in-one -one control panel. Server administration will show an overview of all cloud server virtual machines contained within the package. You can see some general information on this page, such as the name, which will help you distinguish between multiple cloud server virtual machines the hardware configuration, IP addresses, and the current operating system. To find out more info about a particular server, check the box next to it and choose the Server Access Data option from the Administration drop-down menu. This page displays even more information about accessing the server, such as the initial password. The initial password is what you will use to log in to the server as the administrator or root user. If the operating system installed includes Parallels Plesk Panel, the Plesk login credentials and URL will be displayed here for you. The Plesk software is a control panel that helps you manage your server through a web browser instead of through remote desktop or the command line. Your server name and resources are shown again on this page, which can be altered by choosing the Hardware Configuration option from the Administration drop-down menu. Here, you can rename the cloud server virtual machines so that you can differentiate between them. You can also use the slider bars to increase or decrease hardware resources, such as CPU cores, memory, and hard disk space. Hardware resources are billed by the hour, and the price is shown toward the bottom. Be aware that decreasing the hard disk space will require you to re-image the server. A re-image will wipe your machine of all data and reinstall the operating system of your choice. You can re-image a server manually by choosing the Server Re-Image option from the Administration drop-down menu. You'll see a listing of operating systems shown on this page, including some with Parallels Plesk panel and some without. There is no extra charge for Plesk, so you are free to choose an operating system with or without it. In order to get Windows Operating Systems or SUSE Linux Enterprise Server, you must click on the one-in-one -one Shop and then Website Design Tools. Here you can purchase additional operating systems. Under the Security tab, you can also purchase server backup space or up to seven additional IP addresses. IP addresses can be managed through the one-in-one -one Control Panel by clicking the IP Address Overview link from the Start page. Here you can assign IPs to your cloud server virtual machines and also set up a reverse map for the IPs. In addition to assigning IP addresses to your cloud server virtual machines, you must also assign your domains to specific IPs. Click on the Domains link from the Control Panel Start page to see all of your domains. Any new domains you order will have no IP address until you assign one. Check the box next to one of the domains and click the DNS button, then Edit DNS Settings. For the IP address assignment near the bottom, select the VM slash IP option. You can now choose the virtual machine you want the domain to point to and then select the specific IP the domain should use. Each IP address can also utilize an external firewall with up to 25 rules by clicking the firewall link from the one-in-one -one start page. No firewall is enabled initially for any IP address, so you will have to click the new button to configure the firewall rules. It's suggested to use one of the existing rule sets initially, and later you can edit the firewall rules to fine-tune them. Any services you intend to run on your server will need to have the appropriate firewall port open so the connection is not blocked. In order to keep you aware of any service interruptions, one in one offers server monitoring. Server monitoring can be enabled for any of the IP addresses you have. You can select which services or ports to monitor on that IP address and supply your email to be notified if any of the services become inaccessible. If your server somehow becomes totally inaccessible, you can use the VNC Remote Console from the Administration drop-down menu. The VNC Console helps you access the server when you cannot reach it through the network. Java Runtime Environment needs to be installed on your computer in order for the VNC Console to function. By clicking on Start VNC Remote Console, a pop-up window will appear with the login prompt for your server. You can then log in and make any changes necessary to the server in order to re-enable the network access. If you see no login prompt from the VNC console, you can restart the server by selecting the Server Control option from the Administration drop-down menu. You can also use this section to completely shut down your server or turn it back on. In cases where you cannot access your server via remote desktop or SSH and the VNC console is unresponsive, there may be a critical error in your server configuration that is keeping the server from fully booting. You can select the Recovery Tool option from the Administration drop-down menu in order to boot the server into a rescue system. 
By booting a server using one of the rescue options, the server will no longer attempt to boot the operating system installed on the hard drive. Instead, the server will boot from memory, where the rescue system is temporarily held. This rescue system will allow you to make any configuration changes to your server in order for it to boot properly, as well as allow you access to your hard drive data in case you need to back up your files. To try booting your server again from the hard drive after making any changes, choose the Normal System option from the Recovery Tool page. For further information, please visit faq.1in1.com.